Presbyterian Church and the First Presbyterian Church of Sterling, two Presbyterian churches in Long Hill, New Jersey, partnering together. I'm the Reverend Stephanie Munsell, and I thank you and welcome you um, to this time of worship, and I appreciate that you have chosen to worship with us online. I want to share that we also worship in person, and in the month of April, we will worship at the First Presbyterian Church of Sterling. Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. We go back and forth between our two partnering churches month after month. We are in a new month, um, the month of April, and we have a new mission of the month. Our joint mission of the month for April for both of our churches is the Bridges Outreach Brown Bag <laughs> Lunch Program. Each month, a few folks meet in the Pollard Hall at the First Presbyterian Church to prepare 40 brown bag lunches. They contain a sandwich or fruit cup or applesauce, a drink, a snack, um, a napkin, things like that. The lunches are delivered to the Bridges Outreach Office in Summit to be distributed to many grateful members of the homeless community. They're found in Summit, Newark, Irvington, and even sometimes New York City. Now, the cost of providing those 40 lunches is approximately $90 each month, or $2.25 per lunch. We accept donations of snacks, and fruit cups, or applesauce, or drinks throughout the year. But if you're able to help, we also invite you to do that, to drop by on when we have that special making, or make donations, and simply mark them Bridges Lunch. Our next commitment date for preparing those 40 lunches is April 23rd in Pollard Hall at the First Presbyterian Church of Sterling. If you have an hour time and would like to help, we would love to have you join. But all donations from the month of April to Mission of the Month offering will be used to help purchase items that go into the lunch bags. So please support this important ministry to help our homeless neighbors and mark your envelope or check memo with bridges. 
Those, that is the announcement that I have to share with you today. And I would like to invite you to prepare your heart to settle your spirit so that we might worship together. Please join me in the call to worship with the words written on the screen. We gather in the name of the risen Lord. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. We gather to share our faith and to worship God. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. We gather to proclaim the good news of Easter. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. God of the resurrection, we gather today as a community of believers. We come with joy to greet one another and to tell again and again the amazing news, Christ is risen. Love is victorious over death. You have given us new life in the name of your Son. May our singing, praying, listening, and proclaiming be a testimony to the power of your love to make us a new creation as a community of faith. We pray in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. I'd like to invite you to pray with me as we lift up our prayer of confession. Let us pray. God of mercy, we come celebrating our unity, but we confess the many ways we are divided. We create boxes and labels for ourselves and others in ways which are not always healthy. Our nationality, ethnic origin, economic status, gender, church membership, age, musical preferences all too often obscure the common calling we share in Christ's name. May our common identity as your children and our communal witness 
to Christ, bind us together in your name. Forgive our tendency towards separation and division, and remind us that we are your Easter people. Amen. Believe the good news. In and through the risen Christ, we are forgiven and set free. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Dear God, we hear your word. May we be transformed into a true community of believers, ready to go into the world to testify that Christ is alive and active in our lives today. Amen. The first scripture reading is from Acts 4, verses 32 to 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses, sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. Here ends the word of the Lord. Our second scripture comes to us from the book of John, John 20, verses 19 through 31. Listen for the word of God. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked, for they feared the Jews, Jesus came and he stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then his disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was also called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Here ends the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
On Easter, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. It is a triumphant culmination after Jesus taught and healed and preached, performed wonders, and then was betrayed, arrested, put on trial, killed, and laid in a tomb. But death is not the end. The stone is rolled away. The tomb is empty. Christ's resurrection is that climax, the summit, the peak, the pinnacle of joy. The empty tomb is not the whole Easter story. Each one of the Gospels drives this point home. In all of the Gospels, it is women, not one of the 11 disciples, who find the tomb empty. And all the texts name at least one woman, Mary Magdalene, who is present that Easter morning, the only one who all Gospels agree were there. In three of the synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, there is an angelic messenger at the empty tomb. And each one explicitly tells the women, Christ is risen. In the Gospel narratives, the witnesses to the empty tomb not only receive the good news that Christ is risen, but then they are sent. They are sent away from the tomb to go and share the good news. Go with me for a moment through these gospel texts. The Gospel of Matthew paints a vivid picture of the resurrection morning with an earthquake heralding the arrival of a lightning bright angel who rolls the stone away. And the women, in this case, two Marys, are told that Jesus lives. And as they go from that place to tell others, Jesus encounters them and transforms their fear into true joy. And they cling to Jesus. And then he sends them to go and tell. Now Mark's gospel, considered the earliest, presents a different account with possibly two endings. The first is an abrupt ending, leaving readers kind of in suspense. In that case, the women are met by a mysterious figure in a white robe, a young man, it says. He's sitting in the empty tomb, and he tells them that Jesus is not there, that he lives. He tells them to go and tell. Mark tells us that they flee from the tomb in terror and amazement, and that they tell no one. They tell no one, it says. Mark is clever. He kind of figures that we know that because he's telling the story, obviously they didn't stay silent. Because not everyone liked that ending, it seems that a second ending was added, and then a third, a short ending and a longer ending. And in the longer ending, it includes an appearance of the risen Jesus and his commissioning of the disciples and his ascension. But in all of those Mark versions um, of an ending, there is an empty tomb, the news that Christ is risen, and witnesses are sent. We can say the same of Luke. There are three women, and two angels this time, who announced Jesus is risen. The women share their experience with the disciples, but the disciples don't really believe them, except for Peter, who comes and looks to see the empty tomb. That brings us to the book of John. Here, too, is an empty tomb that is not the end of the story. Let's remember that on that first day of the week, which we call Sunday, Mary Magdalene finds the empty tomb. And she runs to Peter, and he and another disciple come to see. And they see the empty place where Jesus' body had laid. But they don't fully understand what they're seeing. And they leave. They go home. But Mary stays, and she weeps. And she's approached by someone she thinks is the gardener. But when he says her name, she knows who it is. It is right before her, the risen Christ. And so she does run back to tell the disciples. Mary is sent to share the good news, and she does so. She says to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And that could be a lovely ending to the Easter story. But it's not. Easter is not an ending. After the resurrection, after the empty tomb, after witnessing Jesus is alive, in John, we are given this story. It's still Sunday, but the day has passed and it's evening. And what do the disciples do? They have gathered in a house. They have locked themselves in 
And even so, Jesus appears to them and he says, peace be with you. He says it once, he says it twice. And it gives the impression that the disciples were pretty agitated and confused and scared and upset. All these things, the opposite of being at peace. So Jesus says again, peace be with you. And this time he adds, as the Father sent me, so I sent you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Once again, those who witness the risen Christ are sent. Commissioned. Commission means to be sent out on a specific task. In this case, to offer forgiveness in the name of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. Considering these stories, I want you to think of these two words, gathered and sent. The disciples gathered in that locked house because they were having all the feelings. Guilt, because no one had a clue what Jesus, what Judas was up to, that he had sold Jesus out. Because Peter had denied even knowing Jesus. They felt fear because they watched their leader be put to death at the hands of the empire, but also at the urging of their very own religious community. They felt confusion. Jesus had told them that he would die and then meet them. And they had thought that had been a lie. But just that morning, Peter and the other beloved disciple said the tomb was empty. And then Mary had been adamant that she had had a conversation with Jesus. So they are also starting to feel hope. Hope that something might be coming. Even that hope made them nervous and afraid. So they gathered. They gathered together. What do you do when something is befuddling or frightening or concerning in your life? Something that is important. I know. I call my friends. I have a women's clergy group that I lean on. I go home to my parents. I gather with my husband and my kids. Gathering together. Togetherness is what Jesus had started with when he called the 12 disciples and various unnamed female disciples. They hadn't known each other until Jesus gathered them, brought them together in community. And so they gathered that night. And while there was safety behind those doors, and in that time of fellowship together and of meeting Christ, they could have decided to stay there, but that's not where Jesus wanted them to stay. He sent them. He used his very breath. Now breath reminds us of the Old Testament story of creation, when the breath of God blew over the waters of creation. And when God breathed into the nostrils of the first human, Breath is a new beginning. Jesus breathed into those gathered there, and he sent them, sent them with the power of the Holy Spirit, sent them with a purpose, gathered and sent. In this Easter story is the very foundation of the church. The miraculous focus of Easter is Jesus' defeat of the power of sin and death. But the Easter story does not end with resurrection. There is no, and they lived happily ever after. After the empty tomb, after the witness to the risen Christ, comes the good news. And John reminds us, then comes the birth of Christ's new body on earth, the church. We, the people who make up the church, we read about in the books of Acts, are meant to gather and to go, to receive strength in our togetherness, but also to go and help spread the resurrection power. I have to believe, and I do, that we need both. We need both to gather and to go to live as resurrected people. 
We need to be around tables with good food to just talk. That togetherness is fuel for our spirits. We need to have projects like baking pies or having meaningful conversation on the fourth Fridays of the month. That togetherness is renewing. But we also need to speak as witnesses to what we know. We need to gather and we need to go. We need to circle up and we need to be sent. When we gather around a communion table, we practice this once a month. We remember Christ's story. We come together, we gather around the table, and then we go. This is Easter togetherness. Now sometimes churches like our two churches lean into the being together. And sometimes we find it harder to be sent out of our doors. Easter is the beginning of the journey to discover what we are sent to do in our lives in Long Hill to serve the risen Christ. So today, remember that you are gathered to God. God calls to you to give you strength and purpose, and then God sends you out to use your gifts and skills to touch the world with goodness in Christ's name. So think about that, how you are gathered and how you might go in the name of the risen Christ. And now let us affirm our faith by reading the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again and ascended into heaven, is seated on the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to join your hearts with mine as we pray together. Let us pray. O oh God, we offer our prayers through Christ, who is the risen Lord, who lives and reigns forever and prays for us. Through Christ, we pray for the church. Let us be a people of joy, living witnesses to the power of the resurrection and the good news of your grace and peace. Living God, hear our prayer. 
Through Christ we pray for the earth. From the dust of the damaged earth, raise up your new creation, full of beauty, wonder, and glory. We pray for all who have been hurt in disasters, such as earthquakes. Living God, hear our prayer. Through God, we pray for all nations. Let the message of your saving power spread throughout the world. Let the dominion of death is no more. Living God, hear our prayer. Through Christ, we pray for this community. Let the doors of this church be open wide as we go forth in love and service and others come to find a home and gather with us. Living God, hear our prayer. Through Christ we pray for loved ones. Give hope to those who wait for the good news. Turn their mourning into dancing, their sorrow into joy. O oh, living God, hear our prayer. God of all power and glory, receive our prayers, those spoken and unspoken, and continue your mighty work among us. Through Jesus Christ, our living Lord, and let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now go, as one who is gathered and sent in Christ's name. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>